They should be fed up. That's how they get money. Ridiculous. He was probably just trying to protect his investment. It was unfortunate that the, um, whoever the person was died. Neighbors react after a copper thief is shot dead by an armed security guard. Tonight is a high rate of crime turning Detroit businesses and homeowners into vigilantes. Welcome back to Let It Rip. On the panel right now, a man who advocates self-defense and carries a gun to prove it, and he's willing to train you, too, to use one, Rick Hector. Next to him, a longtime officer with the Detroit Police Department and a part-time reporter whose <laughs> website, Detroit Uncovered, continues to break ground on what's really going on in the city, Officer John Bennett. They're joined, of course, by the usual suspects, Charlie LaDuff and Charlie Langton, so let's get right to it. Rick, you have long advocated self-defense and sometimes the use of a firearm to do that. Did this security guard do go too far? I don't think that we have all the information, at least published in the media, as to whether he went too far or not. Currently, under Michigan law, you are authorized to use lethal force. If you are somewhere you have a legal right to be, you're not committing a crime, and you face imminent jeopardy of great bodily harm, sexual assault, or death. The information presented is inadequate to make a judgment call on it, but what I will say is that law-abiding citizens recognize and know that you can't use lethal force to defend property. Officer John Bennett, uh, you know what it's like in the streets right now, mm -hmm. and you know that some homeowners complain, look, for property crimes, the cops don't come. They think Absolutely. it's the wild, wild west out there. Well, I, let me first say uh, it's not right for a person to take the law into their own hands. Uh, that being said, I, I have great sympathy for that security guard because he's got to live with the fact that he's taken a man's life. But I think some greater issues need to come to the table, and one of those is the, the places that accept these, this copper that these guys are stealing. City Council and, and the administration need to uh, address those issues as it relates to the ordinances that, that take care of these places that, that take this copper from the people. Also. I don't hear anything from the administration or the council about jobs. Coleman Young, Mayor Coleman Young used to say there's nothing wrong with Detroit that jobs won't fix. And I think if more people in the city were working, we would probably have less of these issues. Um, but first of all, I think we need to deal with the issue of the, the, the scrap yards that take this kind of, the, the copper and those things uh, from, from the people who are stealing it off the businesses. And I, mean, the, I agree homeowners. with your point, but I think we have a lot more crimes in the city of Detroit than just copper theft. I mean, we have carjackings, we have armed robberies, Absolutely. we have rape problems. Absolutely. I mean, we have criminal behavior all over the city. And, and that's but why we... we have, have, but we can't have the public take crime into their own hands. Well, yeah. no, the public, just, see it. the public has to rely on the police department. I think we've got to beef up the police department. Well, here's, more the, here's the, the actual streets, thing. More money for cops. In actuality, a law-abiding citizen or any resident of the city of Detroit does not have a guaranteed right to not be a crime victim. Ultimately, your personal protection is your own responsibility. Yes, the police are called and summoned when there has been a crime that has been committed and they're discharged with arresting suspects, doing an investigation and interviewing witnesses. But at the end of the day, your personal protection is your responsibility. Yeah, well, here's what some people are saying online. Fox TV has been sounding off about this issue. Here's an email we got tonight. Stephen Fogarty says he knows firsthand how it feels to be a crime victim. He writes, copper thieves broke into my house, took my new furnace, and all the copper plumbing, not once but twice. As soon as I replaced everything, they came back the same night and got it all again. $5,000 just thrown out the window. Then people want to know why nobody wants to live in Detroit. And Charlie Langton, let me ask you legally, though, if I am the owner of an apartment complex and I hire a security guard to protect my property and that guard shoots and kills someone, am I liable for possible crimes committed by someone I hired? Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be in your situation, Hugh. Uh, but, the, but probably not. You're, you are probably not responsible for the criminal acts of the people you hire. The criminal acts. Well, could you be negligent, however? A civil case? We're talking criminal case? Would you go to jail? Maybe not. But could you be sued civilly, perhaps? I would say yes, there is that possibility. So you're not off the hook. Make sure you hire the people that do what we've talked about. You cannot use your gun to protect your property. As much as you want to, <laughs> as much as it's wrong, you can't do it. If they come after me, I can shoot. That's the law. <laughs> but I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to see this gentleman prosecuted. Look, he was hired to do a job. No. You know, they paid him to do a job. He did the job. Maybe he went to the extreme. He shouldn't have taken the man's life. He shouldn't be prosecuted for it. 
But at the same time, there are some greater issues that we need to address. Rick said, uh, you know, there are other crimes. Yeah, we need more police officers on the street. We have to have more police officers on the street if we're ever going to get a handle on the crime in the city of Detroit. So Charlie, you're, you're, you're a man of peace, after. Charlie. I know yeah. you are, but I also know you know how to use a gun. I'm a man with a peace. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think this is the solution is to arm civilians. I mean, yeah. this guy went through so much training to make the right decision to understand justifiable force or uh, imminent danger. Now, you, you're letting people run around and make that decision. Well, for we're them. not talking that, about necessarily that's letting plug, people That's run plugging around. the hole for this wild, wild west that's out there. I'm that's not, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not, sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure we have a that, wild, wild west the, activity out here. But I mean, no, I'm reporting. talking about the streets. You know, I mean, just like right, right. too much well, crime and not enough police. There's definitely and no respect a lot for the of law. crime. And John and I were talking earlier today. The the numbers of police officers on the force to respond to calls for assistance have has steadily decreased. But the thing that I really want to get across is that we all have a, a right to defend ourselves. We have a right to self defense. I'm not certain as to what actually transpired here. We do know that a security guard shot and killed a guy. We don't know the circumstances behind that shooting. Was but I wasn't after talking, talking about the cop, I'm you. talking about but in general. All I'm saying is that there could have been a circumstance in which the shooting was justified. Sure. Until that investigation is complete, we don't know. And I understand, too, that, that Rick Ector, previous in his life, previously in his life, was a man of peace. He didn't own a gun, but when he was robbed... When I was robbed in my own driveway... I said, okay, well, I have to make a decision. Do I want to continue to do nothing and leave it to chance that I become a crime victim again? Or should I refuse to be a victim, get the appropriate training, and arm myself but to protect myself? Sad, but isn't that sad, sad, though, but, that we have to resort, we've got to get guns in order to protect ourselves? But we isn't don't it, feel confident with our police department. We don't feel confident with our fire department. But, but isn't but, it but, great but, that we can get a gun to but, defend but, ourselves but, 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 but in the absence of that Be honest, Charlie, if you felt threatened, wouldn't you have a gun and wouldn't you use it? I'd probably move out. That's probably what I do. I don't want you know, I, 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 I don't carry one because I would. I don't we can't afford. And I'm going as, to see you we, just to get the right to do it. We can't it, afford sir. as a society have everybody walking around with the gun. In in, mm. in our department, mm. we have a saying that some people are meant to be the police. Some people are meant to call the police. You know, I want you all to call the police. Call us. Let us handle it. Rick, call us. We'll handle well, here's the it. How long is that? We're not, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about me. So okay. If, if, okay. if I'm in my home and someone kicks in my door with a gun to do mm -hmm. murder and mayhem, okay. you know what I'm saying? I would uh, rather reach for my gun first yeah. than to call but, you. Yeah, that, I, I that's know. in your home, but I mean on the I'll street. Think, mm -hmm. I'm going to call John. John, home. John if, I'm calling you. If I'm in the parking lot, somebody's got to wait. How long you got to wait for the police? Gentlemen, we can't sell it right now. Put your guns away. Thank you. All right. It's not even the end of September yet, and already stores are gearing up for Christmas. Is that too early? Or are people ready to get their holiday shopping done right now? It's your turn to speak. We take Let It Rip on the Road. Stay with us. Take a look in the five and ten. Glisten and...